Shalom Aleichem, my dear brothers and sisters. In this video, I would like to address the question of somebody asked me, uh, why don't Jews prostrate? And I would like to address this question. So first of all, I want to say that we, as Jews, we do prostrate on the holiday of Yom Kippur. And also, uh, some Jews do it on the holiday of uh, Rosh Hashanah. <clears throat> But generally, throughout the year, we do not uh, prostrate. And, and the question is, why not? And we acknowledge that back in the days, we used to do this as Jews. We used to prostrate uh, when we still had the Temple of Jerusalem, um, the first and the second Temple. And, um, and this actually brings me to the answer. Now, the answer that I'm about to tell you is something I've heard. I haven't really, you know, uh, found like the actual source for it. So. If somebody knows the source and can comment, that would be great. I really would like to know myself what's the source. But this is the two answers I heard. That one answer was like this. The reason Jews stopped... Well, firstly, let me just mention this before I even go into the answers. That the Torah itself uh, never um, uh, commanded us to prostrate. I mean, there's no explicit command in the Torah that when we pray, we have to prostrate. And therefore, things like this that are not directly mentioned in the Torah, uh, they, there's two options. Either it could be a rabbinical enactment, which we have to observe, you know. So, uh, for example, prayer itself is uh, commanded in the Torah, but it, the, uh, the Torah doesn't specify how many times a day. So, therefore, from the commandment of the Torah itself, we have to pray really only once a day, at least according to the Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon, Rambam. However, Regardless of that, the rabbis instituted the three, three times a day prayer. So therefore, as Jews today, all of us have to pray three times a day, the Amidah prayer. That's the main prayer. I mean, we pray a lot more, like, you know, but uh, the three main ones, the, what's called the Amidah prayer, the silent prayer, has to be prayed three times a day. But this is a rabbinical enactment, meaning the Torah commanded us to follow the rabbis, to listen to the leaders and the rabbis, and they could enact things like this. But we, as uh, Jews, we have to know the difference. You know, there's something called the Torah commandment and there's something called the rabbinical enactment. Now, um, so when something is not mentioned in the Torah, there could be two options. Either it's a rabbinical enactment, right? Uh, or another option is that it could be a minhag. Minhag means like a tradition. Now, traditions sometimes develop, you know, just develop. Sometimes they stop. It really depends, I guess, on the people. Um, so. Uh, the prostration itself, it's not mentioned in the Torah as a commandment, explicit, one thing, and it's not enacted by the rabbis that we must prostrate, so it's not a rabbinical enactment. So this falls down into the uh, category of tradition. Now we acknowledge that we did have such a tradition to prostrate, and the question is why did this tradition stop? Right, and that's what I want to address. And the answer to that is uh, the one again. I haven't really seen the source, and I could be wrong. This could be the wrong answers, but I'm just gonna, you know, uh, I just want to make this disclaimer, and I'm gonna uh, tell you what I heard. And if somebody actually knows the source, that would be great if they can bring this. Uh, but anyways, so one answer I heard is like this: that um, since uh, the prostration was something that was done in the temple in Jerusalem, when the temple was destroyed. The Jews wanted to differentiate between the temple and the regular synagogues that we have nowadays, for example, right? And and there is a big difference between the temple and the synagogues. The synagogues is nothing compared to the temple. The temple was actually considered to be a holy place to the point where, you know, before going into there, a person had to purify himself. You know, if he ever touched, like, say, a dead animal or stepped on a dead, um, like, crawling thing, he had to actually immerse himself in the mikvah, and or if he had sexual relationship, you know, he had to immerse himself in the mikvah before he would be able to go to the temple. And there's whole different rules of uh, what to do. When I say mikvah, by the way, I'm not sure if everybody knows, but it's a body of water, natural water, like a well, well, more like a maybe lake or a spring, um, and uh, and therefore. A person had to immerse himself before going into there. Now, if a person, let's say, was around a dead body, right, a human body, I mean, then there was even a stronger procedure. He had to wait seven, you know, days, 
and there's a whole procedure which I don't want to get into it, but basically the temple with which we had in Jerusalem had a completely different status than what we have today, the synagogues that where we pray at. Another thing, the biggest, probably the biggest difference is that inside the temple of Jerusalem, the sacrifices would be brought. That's the only place we're allowed to bring sacrifices as Jews. We cannot bring sacrifice, let's say, in our own backyard. It has to be in the temple in Jerusalem. Nowadays, we don't have the temple. You know, it's been destroyed. The last one was destroyed by the Romans. And therefore, we're not allowed to bring sacrifices nowadays until, you know, the temple is rebuilt. So in order to differentiate between the actual temple and the um, uh, synagogues that we have, that's why the Jews stopped prostrating, just to show that there's, it's not the same thing. You know, we, the synagogues we have is just a house of prayer. We learn Torah there, but it's nothing compared to the, uh, you know, the real uh, temple which we had in Jerusalem. That's one of the answers I heard. Another answer I heard is that after the destruction of the temple and when the Jews got exiled and dispersed among the nations, in order, since some of the nations, I guess, were also prostrating or maybe began to prostrate, um, or some of the religions, therefore the Jews stopped doing it in order to differentiate themselves from the other religions. That's another answer I heard. Now, I also heard that there was a rabbi uh, who was the son of the Rambam, Rabbi Abraham, I think, Ben Rambam. I heard that he actually tried to reinstitute this tradition of prostration, uh, but, you know, it never picked up and uh, the Jews never did it. Uh, and that's, it's interesting also, in the, if I'm not mistaken, I think in the Shulchan Aruch, which is the code of the Jewish uh, law, it's brought down that I think, if I'm not mistaken again, I, this is, I remember, I was in the class where the rabbi was mentioned it, like he read it, but I didn't really check inside exactly what it says. But anyways, uh, the, it says in the code of the Jewish law that a person could prostrate if he wants a Jew could prostrate if he wants during the prayer Amidah, but not publicly, I think. Why? Because publicly he would stand out among the other people, among the you know other Jews that are praying with him, and that's not good. You know, as Jews, we try not to stand out. We try to do everything the same. Uh, but privately, I think he mentioned um, in the Shulchan Aruch that it is allowed to prostrate, although I'm not sure if everybody agrees with that uh, opinion or not. So I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching.